So Noir November is a wonderful time of the year because sometimes, especially on Mondays, I will go from watching a film noir right before going to sleep to watching a film noir when I first wake up. So uh, last night I went to sleep after watching um, Drunken Angel and woke up and watched The Enforcer first thing. So that's, you know, a nice bookend. Uh, the Enforcer was supposed to be directed by Bretain Windust. I'm really hoping I say that name right. Uh, but he fell ill early on in the filming and the production was taken over by Raoul Walsh, who did not take credit for um, his direction on the film. But if you will recall, Raoul Walsh uh, was one of the first directors to really give Bogart a big break. He did High Sierra, um, which was the film that really pushed Bogart into stardom. And this was, so that was in, what was that, 1940? 41. So 10 years later, Raoul Walsh then directs Bogart's last film with Warner Brothers, The Enforcer. Um, this is the sort of police procedural noir. It's, uh, it was released in England as Murder, Inc., and it is inspired by the Murder, Inc. trials. So if you want to look a little up about them, you kind of get some context. Uh, the film is one of those noirs that is like a flashback within a flashback within a flashback. So there's lots of flashbacks. There's lots of information to sort through. Um, it gets a little bogged down towards the end where you're just like, where am I right now? Um, but the last five, six minutes or so are so tense and so like fraught with, with like, is this woman going to die? Oh my God. That, um, you know, it's 1951, so you're pretty sure she's not going to die. Bogart's still going to be a hero, but like for a little bit, you're not sure. Um, so it's definitely worth it for that last, that last end. Uh, the film has Zero Mostel in it, who's always great, and Everett Sloan, who uh, you will recall is the fantastic villain from The Lady from Shanghai. Or is he the villain? He's a bad guy from The Lady from Shanghai, let's put it that way. Um, so it's, it's a mob film. This is similar to uh, Drunken Angel that I watched last night, which was a Yakuza film. It's a mob film uh, w with the main uh, crooks of the, of the plot being that Humphrey Bogart, the DA, is trying to put the lead guy in jail. And he finally has a witness. Unfortunately, the witness falls out of a window. In this film, he clearly was trying to escape and then decided that he couldn't and then was trying to climb back in and falls out the window. In the real story, they're still not sure they never really found out, like, did he get pushed? Did he fall out? Like, what's the deal here? Y you never really know. Um, and then he has to go back through all the evidence to try to figure out some other way to keep the trial going forward. And that's how you get the flashbacks within the flashbacks within the flashbacks and the going over lots of evidence to figure out and re-talking to witnesses and figuring out, like, what they missed. Um, which basically shows you that, like, don't, hinge your entire case on one person, like, try to have, try to have more evidence than that. Um, but this, this has beautiful cinematography from Robert Burks, who, uh, what else did he do? He did Strangers on a Train and Psycho and Beyond the Forest, so he's a guy. Um, and To Catch a Thief. So this was a great, great noir. Lots of trench coats, lots of hats, lots of high contrast lighting. Lots of bad guys. And um, pretty solid performance from Bogart. Like, very hero performance. It's less, uh, it's more very, more hero, less um, conflicted, who knows what he is kind of thing. So it's definitely a good topper to his, like, days at Warner Brothers because he started out sort of as that gangster and then he played the hero for most of the 40s and then this is sort of his last 40, his last heroic role before he started doing freelance Things like uh, In a Lonely Place, which was the next, which is actually the same year. I don't know if they were filmed concurrently or not. Um, I have to look that up. But anyways, this was Bertrand Windus and or Raoul Walsh's The Enforcer starring Humphrey Bogart. It's from 1951, not to be confused with the um, Enforcer from the 70s. 
Now I'm guessing, hold on, I just clicked looking at the uh, looking at the dates here. In a Lonely Place. So I think In a Lonely Place must have been filmed first because that came out in early 50 and The Enforcer came out in late 51 unless it was in like post-production forever. I'm not really sure. Uh, which reminds you know, now that I'm talking about In a Lonely Place, we should read the novel that In a Lonely Place is based on. It's very different than the book and um, I love both but the book is really fascinating. It's by Dorothy B. Hughes. But what I did watch, in case you're confused again, was The Enforcer, 1951. Uh, it's available on DVD from Olive Films. That's how I watched it. I rented it from Videodrome here in Atlanta. They have an entire great film noir section. They also have a noir vember $2 rental section right now. So if you head on down to Videodrome in Atlanta, you can get lots of noir. There's so many people renting noir right now that the film I had actually meant to check out was already rented. So that's really exciting to hear that there's so many people renting noir right now that I, I couldn't even rent the one I wanted to rent. That's great. So um, keep watching uh, your noir films and we're not even halfway done yet. I think tomorrow is the 15th so we're we're getting there. Um, I hope you've discovered some great uh, gems. If you have, tweet them at me. It's at Old Film Slicker on Twitter. You can tell me all about um, what you've been watching. I'm interested to hear. Uh, and have a good night or morning. I don't know what time it is. It's eight. Have a good morning.